What's up guys, Prepared Survivalist. Going to be looking at some more modifications to a 110 Conibear. And this is a pretty cool one. It's fairly simple to do. And I think it's probably the best type of trigger mod for a 110. And basically you're just going from the wire whiskers, bending the wire. You're adding a treadle plate so the, the trap is triggered by something walking through and standing on the plate rather than pushing the wires. And it, it took me a while to figure out how to make the wires effective. I've got some other videos on that. And you can, I guess they're whiskers or whatever you want to call them, but you can you know, put rope in there and smear peanut butter and bait or or you know other type of wire and just wrap it around like this the animal really can't get through without pushing through that they don't want to stick their face on these like pointy barbs cold metal so you know you can experiment with that and have varying results but the first time that I did this mod I caught a rat the first day and then nothing the second day and then the squirrel the third day and I basically just did it kind of like a blind set, fenced it in right on a trail that I've actually made, put a, a little bait leading up to it, and they just go right through. They see that hole, and they just want to continue on through it. So you'll start with your trap in this configuration. You just really need a pair of pliers. And uh, generally, this is like the bottom of the rivet. That's the top. I have an extra screw that I put in there to, to make it, give it less travel. So it's more sensitive of a trigger. But you, you want the, the dog part of the, or the jaw with the dog on it to be facing up and the, do, the teeth of the dog to be facing up. And then also the trigger whiskers will be on the, the top side as well. Get the, the other stuff out of the way. So first thing you want to do is probably straighten your wires out. And then bend them as close to the base as you can. And this wire is pretty strong but you don't want to be bending these a lot. So get it right. The first time you do it, you probably just want to leave it there. So you get something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's basically just running parallel to the top of the jaw, right? Then, I don't know, maybe an inch into it, put a, put a 90 in it. And you can keep kind of bending these. You know, maybe if you had multiple tools, there's probably a better way to do it. But basically making a field goal type post. Fix my pliers here. Okay. okay, something like that. And you, you actually can, it's basically like a fork kind of top of the field goal in football. So like that. Right? More or less from the side, you can kind of see it. Now you probably, I would say actually angle these in a little. So they're kind of pointing in the center. Because all you're going to do is take your piece of corrugated plastic. And I'd been wanting to do this mod for a long time. But I didn't have any corrugated plastic. Not that it's hard to come by. It's, you know, every political sign on the side of the road or real estate sign is corrugated plastic. But I found this in the creek, just washed, just trash. I was picking up trash one day. And this was laying there the whole time about, you know, it's bright blue. And uh, it's all weathered and everything. And it was laying there the whole time. <clears throat> about 20 feet from where I ended up setting up the trap and catching the squirrel. So you probably want the square 
I mean, obviously it's going to be, uh, you know, the within the dimensions of the trap. I would say about half the size of the trap. So if you look at the total surface area inside, it's probably about half that. Okay, but so you can just cut a square, and I don't know what is it about two two inches by four inches, something to that effect. If it's more, the longer it is this way, you're going to have more leverage, so it'll trigger easier. But it's also going to trigger sooner. So, and you you don't really want it getting caught in the jaw. I mean, it'll, not that it'll matter, but, um, you know, you, if it were to get damaged or something, you might not be able to reuse it as many times. So I, I think this is a pretty good size. It's a little more rectangular than it is square. But, you, you know, something approximate to that. The main thing is just that it's not too big. Okay, and then, so, kind of skipped ahead, but once you're, you got that field goal formation there, you want to bend these up, okay, at another 90. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. When I actually did this, I did it in the field with the lanyard hole in my folding knife and I just stuck it in like that and bent it. I didn't even have pliers. So you can, I mean, basically do this by hand or just with almost any tool that allows you to bend the wire. So once you got that, and again, our dog is on the top, teeth facing up, trigger is on the top, wires facing up. Just real simple, you just take your corrugated plastic Put it through the holes. Fits on there nice and snug. Okay. It kind of doesn't really make sense um, while you're making it because it's not in the set formation. So, unless you're really paying attention or following the instructions in this video, you will probably do it wrong the first time. Unless you're just randomly guessing and you happen to do it right. So, again, it will be facing, pointing straight up in this configuration. And that's basically it. So, you can set it. And you probably will want to set it from... Hold it on the bottom, set it from the top. Okay, so another thing to mention here. Traditionally, this is how we set our Tana Bears, right? With the dog on top. Tri the trigger whiskers pointing downward. Well, you can already see how much space is opened up. That's a clear spot that the animal is going to feel comfortable walking through. So, when setting this, the correct formation is like this, upside down. Again, that makes it more dangerous um, to the person setting the trap because the dog can now be released by gravity or it's more prone to be released because it's upside down. Okay, Not a big deal, just be safe when handling the trap. Um, I, I usually use mine on the second notch. Uh, this one has to be on the first notch because my second one is so sensitive that gravity and with the weight of the, the pan will pretty much set that off. So no big deal. Uh, it's just even more powerful when it's on the first notch. Now also note that how that's situated. It's not going to be centered and that's fine, but it's 
the wires are bent back into the trap. So the wires are on the top side and they're pointing back in through the trap to the other side. If you did it wrong and they're pointing the other way, now you have your entire pan basically outside the jaws, which when it closes, it'll still be mostly inside the jaw, but it's better this way than the other way. Now you would also run two parallel sticks or something, Let's see if we can get this, and set it like this out in the field, right? And you see how the dog is in between them? What that does is it lifts up the, supports the bottom of the jaws and gives the dog space because that dog isn't gonna, come, isn't gonna flip off easily if the ground's pressing up into it. It's not gonna be as sensitive and it could foul the operation of the trap. So, you want to put it on some sticks and that just helps keep keep the jaws up out of the dirt or what have you and it'll make them function even better so put put some sticks there rocks or whatever uh, scrape a groove in the dirt you know give your dog a little bit of clearance scrape a groove you know you have time to do it get your whole set situated properly so that the trap can fit in there nicely and then, um, you know, fence it in. I always run some diagonals sticks that'll actually go in this part of the trap because you can't get caught right there, right? You can only get caught in the front or the back. So if you have sticks running like this, it'll help to lock it in. I put, I put sticks through the spring Probably should have done a, a field video, but you know these are just tabletops indoors where I've got my camera and everything's controlled. So, um, but you can see, you know the treadle. It's just parallel to the ground, and the trap will uh, once a squirrel or whatever's going through there, mink, muskrat, basically. The first thing that's going to touch it is its paw, obviously, because it's going to be trying to walk through that. Now, it's not going to be sticking its paw out in front of its head. It's going to be, you know, under its shoulders. So its head is already going to basically be completely in the middle of the trap by the time it's standing on the edge of it, just depending on how it enters the trap. So you're either you're guaranteed either a neck catch or a body catch. It's not like you know the squirrel is going to trigger it before it's in there. It can only trigger it being deep in the trap. In the same way, if it's directional or multi-directional and it could come from the other side of the the trap, it's still got to be all the way through. Step on that thing, and it's either going to get nailed on the front or the back. It's gonna get nailed somewhere so the I, I think it's actually better that that pan is that treadle is offset a little bit because it uh, it kind of puts the the animal in a certain place within the trap to really get hit hard probably around the neck the squirrel I caught was a perfect neck catch so I, I can say firsthand that it, it gets them right where it needs to. So uh, we will just kind of do a uh, test on it. Now a lot of people, this is a pet peeve of mine when testing their traps and they slam a stick in it. Okay, well, you know, squirrel's not gonna run up and jump on your treadle. It's gonna gingerly walk across. So when testing your sensitivity of your triggers, you know, do it very lightly and just see how sensitive it is. So I'm actually gonna hold this off the ground and just kind of rest this piece of cardboard. So actually that wasn't that sensitive because I pushed pretty hard. Um, so I would probably wanna do my second, uh, second notch then. 
Of course, this isn't on the ground, so it's just freehand. But I'll give it a little tap. See, it's not sensitive. So you can see it's actually angled down. But it's on the least sensitive setting, so. And what you can do, too, and it, you know, the this thing will pop out. It's not going to stay on there. But it fits securely when it's when you're setting it, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's, I mean, it's cheap. It's replaceable, so you can stick it right back on. No big deal. It's not going anywhere. Now, as far as that sensitivity issue or lack thereof, um, if you want to use that same dog setting, that first notch, just take a stick. You know, keep your hands out of there and just kind of press that. Uh, treadle downward because you saw how it was angling down because it had already moved a little bit just keep kind of pushing it to get it started you might accidentally set it off but if you can get it most of the way that treadle is going to be let me show you here she just fits right back on no problem okay so that treadle Instead of being perfectly level, it's going to be facing down, which is more inviting because it's more of a subtle, you know, walk up for the animal. So if you can kind of start it and, and, and push it down a little, the same way when doing like a foothold and you kind of adjust the pan so that it's real low, uh, that's going to make it a little more natural. Um, that way the animal isn't walking across a flat trail and then there's a you know, inch and a half tall step up that's going to give it reason to think twice about um, you know, getting in there. And just some other talking points on this. Um, you definitely want to camouflage it. I see no reason why not. Um, I just took some leaves and since it was the way I had it set up, it was pretty riding pretty high. I, I put a lot of leaves in front of it so that it gave the appearance that the ground was level with the treadle. And then I just laid a couple leaves just flat on top of it so it didn't build it up too high. But it completely covered and threw some dirt on there. It covered the pan. It looked real natural. And then you can do it on the back side as well put some more leaves over here so it just looks like looks real natural and you have sticks fencing holding your conibear up so that you know nothing is unnatural looking it's very camouflaged um, if you want to bait it I mean if you got a good a good trail um, even an artificial one that you've made it's going to be inviting for an animal to go through but uh, what I did is I just baited the trail itself and then the animal naturally wanted to just continue on to the other side of the trail where there's more bait so whichever way it comes up it sees more bait on the other side and passes through you can do that if you want to bait the trap you can take something like pine sap as far as natural materials Put it on there, stick some seeds or whatever so they're stuck. Um, but you know, the animal can still pull them off at once, but you know, they're adhered to it. And then it's obviously going to go up to the trap and work the pan or stand on it to get the seeds off. And you know, it's going to be triggered then. Um, you can put bait under it too, right? So the animal's going to, because this. This uh, trigger, you know, conibear triggers go either way, even though we bent this to, ideally, they would step on it and go down. If they push it up, it's going to get triggered too. So if you had that uh, pan angled down and you put some bait under that, well, the animal has to get under that, work this up to get to the bait, and then he's going to get nailed that way as well. So... You know, if you're you're on a good trail or something, and they're st stealing your bait and they're not going through because they're leery of it, go ahead, put your bait underneath there. There's no way for them to get to the bait without moving the treadle, and then they're gonna tr uh, trigger the pan. 
or trigger the trap, I should say. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you saw how easy it is to make. You basically only need a piece of corrugated plastic, and this was found, you know, in the woods, in the water. So it's cheap, easily replenishable. The piece I found was only about as big as this cutout or this uh, envelope. And you can see how many you'd get. You, you know, I only have a half dozen ton of bears, so I have, you know, you can make a bunch of these, you can make up a dozen, and then throw them in your trapping kit. If you lose them or they get chewed up or broke, you just replace them. It's real easy. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't really see why I would go back to the other way uh, with the wires because, um, you know, this just seems to work so much better. It's a lot more inviting. There's more versatility to the trap to do it that way. All right, guys, that's it on this one. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.